the builders finished and there it is my yellow paper bike now there's been lots of interest in this and lots of technical questions actually that i kind of glossed over so i'm going to do a little bit more in depth on the technical stuff but the first test you're going to put something like this too is can it take the weight because i'm not light and if this won't take my weight in a static condition then it is not running around the car park with the motor so the question is can i sit on the thing and there we go it takes my weight easily enough and i'm not the lightest so we still have to run it around, I appreciate that. But let's have a look at some of the closest stuff on this so you get an idea about some of the ways that um, I've built it that are perhaps glossed over a little bit. Now you have to remember this is a prototype, so there's going to be lots of questions I just don't have the answer to. Uh, mostly it was guesswork and crossing my fingers to make sure that it worked. These larger poles here are made out of 15 sheets of newspaper. The first 10 sheets are just rolled up, and it's only the last five sheets where I painted them with casein glue. Now, all I actually did was put a piece of plastic down, put the paper down, paint it with the glue, lay another piece on, paint it with the glue, and so on till I'd laid up five sheets. Then I took the roll of 10 sheets that were actually nice and tight, rolled that on the five sheets and put that back in the roller so we get a really tight roll of paper. And that's true of all of these. They've all had their last five sheets with the glue applied and the first period of sheets with no glue at all. So this one had 15 sheets in total. These ones, which are the stairs, they had 10 sheets in total. So the first five sheets and then another five sheets glued. This upright here had, um, sorry, 10, 15, 20, my apologies. This thinner one had 15, so the first 10 sheets, then five, first 15, then five, first five, and then five. Well, that's how I made those tubes. Now, I didn't know how strong those tubes were going to be, it was purely a guess. If I needed more strength in those tubes, well, I would have just made them thicker. And there's two ways to make them thicker. Either you can make them thicker unglued or thicker glued. Thicker glued makes them more dense and certainly more strong. Now I did them all with the grain in that direction. And if you think about it, that's where all the pressure is. It's all going to be flexing that way and that way. And that's where you want the strength. So all the grains are in that direction. If I were to apply it in the middle, there's a chance it will split. Because in that direction, they're weaker than in that direction or that direction because of the grain runner. But it's why I did the grain, to make sure that most strength was in that direction where we actually needed it. You could cross ply them if you want, but it will make it stiffer and difficult to handle and difficult to roll. It's always hard to roll against the grain than it is to roll with the grain. So if you're doing flat pieces, then a cross ply with the grain that way and 90 degrees would be a good idea because it will make a stiff flat piece. If you're doing tubes, you really want the grain running in the direction of the tube, I would say. Now these joints, some of the joints you'll see are butt joints, some of the joints are where one is resting on the other. Now I don't really think it matters that much because we've wrapped these joints. So this joint here is a butt joint where it was drilled through and then in the same way it's a bamboo, stitched and then wrapped. These ones, where we've got them laying over each other, it's kind of like a figure of eight. So I can start here and go around, round, in a figure of eight to clench them on. So all the force is going down on here, on this joint, and it's got like a, um, hmm, like a hammock underneath it, holding it against that pressure going down. True enough, I could have put them on the top. And if I put them on the top, this crossbar would have taken the pressure, which means the strength of the joint would have been transferred to this point here. But I don't think it really matters if you butt join them, or if you butt join them, or if you put the butt underneath, or on top. It's really an experiment to try and see what will and won't work, because this is an experimental procedure where we're working things out. We don't know. Now, in terms of how long it will last, then I really don't know. I mean, nobody's done anything like this before, so there's no information on it. We'll have to see how long it will last. It will wear out. Everything wears out. Even the hills. Nothing lasts forever. So it's going to wear out. It's just a question of when. So if we get like two to five years out of it, actually, that's pretty good going. If we get five minutes out of it, then it's probably going to be very weepy. But we don't know at this stage, and we won't know for another two years or so while we work with it. Now, I cut this seat pole quite high because I wanted to make sure it fitted me, because there's no adjustment on the seat pole. You can't adjust it. It's the height that it is. 
So when I worked out how high it was, I cut it off. It's much easier to cut something off. So when you're doing these things, if you've got something that needs adjustment, well, leave it slightly longer, and then you can actually just adjust it and then fix it afterwards. Now, in a normal bike, then these stays, once you get past the wheel, have a bend in them. I didn't think it was going to be too easy to bend this paper. I'm not sure. I just didn't think it would be. So I carried them on straight away to this cross piece where we've got 90 degree joints. It would certainly be worth trying to see if you could put a bend in them to bring them round like a, a wishbone. And that would be very cool. I didn't do that. I put them straight. But on this back wheel, I've left the um, drive cog on as well as put my drive mechanism there. And that drive cog is on because we can put a chain and pedals on there if we want. So later, if we want to put a chain and pedals on, we have that ability because there's the drive cog left on and enough space for us to be able to get a chain set in there. We'd probably have to rejig this bit a little bit so we could get a crank set on, but it has that potential of being able to put a crank set. And the crank set I put on the same way that I put the head here. Around this head is in fact a tube of metal that has been wrapped in there to take the bearings here and here. Those wear surfaces probably need to be metal. So with the crank set, I'd probably do exactly the same thing. Put a tube of metal there, bind the whole thing in, and then I could put the bearings in for the crank set and then run that to that back cog, which is probably how I would do that if I wanted this to be a bicycle. But remember, we're not actually making a bicycle. What we're doing is exploring the possibility of this newspaper tube. So we've made a bicycle for sure, but the same principle could certainly be applied to a whole range of things. Now, I think I've covered most of the issues that people mentioned. Um, one more. The drive cock at the back has to have spaces between the cog and the wheel to avoid fouling of the belt on the um, tyre. Now, that was mentioned as a comment, and I, I did say in the video that I'd put nuts in there to act as a spacer, but I, I, if that wasn't picked up, then clearly it wasn't emphasised enough that that back drive cog does need to be a little bit away from the wheel in order to stop fouling of the uh, tyre against the drive belt. Um, can't think of anything else that I've missed. If there is anything else and you want to know more information, please do leave a comment because I read them all obviously and I respond to them. I tend only to respond to the comments the first day uh, and that's mostly because I have so many comments to respond to and so many emails. But I do read them and I do try to respond to them. Okay. So I now get on and finish this drive and let's have this running up and down. I wanted to fill you in on those details because so many people had been asking. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.